Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to look at how to find uh, or what the unit vector is. And then we're also going to talk about linear combinations versus component form and what those two look like. So the first thing we're going to look at is finding a unit vector. And a unit vector has a length of 1. So any unit vector would have a length of 1. So if you look at the unit circle, if you've learned the unit circle, you know you've got a circle that has a radius of 1. That means every value on the unit circle is actually on a vector that is a unit vector. So the unit circle actually represents unit vectors. And as we know, the, the angle 0, that position, has got the coordinates of 1, 0. That is the vector or the unit vector i. Then the angle at pi halves, which is also known as 90 degrees, that has the position 0, 1. That represents the vector j, which is a unit vector. So on the unit circle, you have an i vector and a j vector. Okay, now let's look at how to take a vector and write it as a unit vector. In other words, you have got a vector. Let's say that it's got a magnitude or a length of 10. And you don't want it to have a length of 10. You want it to be a unit vector. You want it to have a length of 1. Well, what would you need to do? You would just divide it by 10. Well, that's exactly what you do to convert a vector to a unit vector. So in many applications of vectors, it's useful to find a unit vector, a vector with a radius or length of 1, magnitude of 1. It's in the same direction. It's just smaller. And to do this, we simply divide the vector v by its magnitude. So we take the length or the magnitude and we just divide by it. So to get a unit vector, we take vector v and we divide it by the magnitude. So this double line, you can have a single line or a double line, but it represents magnitude. So we're going to take the magnitude, 1 over the magnitude, which is just dividing by the magnitude times the vector itself. So we're going to find a unit vector in the direction negative 2, positive 5, and verify that it is indeed does indeed have a magnitude of 1. So let's Try to sketch this picture. So we have a vector. It's in uh, component form. That means it starts at the origin. And we're going to go negative 2, positive 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So somewhere up here. And this is ending position is here. That's the terminal position. And there's our vector. Okay. Now, we want a vector in the same direction, so still in quadrant 2 like this, but instead of being long like this one, we want it to be short and only have a length of 1. So how can we shrink it down? Well, it's very easy. First thing we need to do is figure out what is the magnitude of this vector. To find the magnitude, we just want the length, so we're going to take 2 squared plus 5 squared. So I'm just... I'm using the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 4 plus 25 is 29. So c ends up being the square root of 29. So that's our magnitude. So now all we do is multiply this vector by 1 over the magnitude, or in other words, divide by the magnitude. So that means my vector is just going to be negative 2 divided by square root of 29 and 5 divided by the square root of 29. That is the vector. Now that's not rationalized, so let's rationalize those. You just multiply top and bottom by root 29, so if you rationalize that position, you're going to get negative 2 root 29 all over 29. And the vertical direction is 5 root 29 all over 29. Now, how can we prove that this actually has a magnitude of 1? 
Well, I'm going to go back and use the unsimplified version just to make it a little bit easier to show you it indeed does. So I'm going to take negative 2 and over the square root of 29, and I'm going to plug it into the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to square it plus 5 over the square root of 29, and I'm going to square that. And if we're going to prove it, we're going to see, does it indeed equal to 1? Let's see. Uh, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Square root of 29 squared is 29. We're going to add to it 5 squared, which is 25, all over the square root of 29 squared, which is 29. And when you add two fractions, if they have the same common denominator, you add the numerator. So that's 29 over 29, and that is indeed 1. So guess what? We just showed that that is indeed a unit vector. Okay, so let's try a second one. Find a unit vector, u, in the direction of v. So v is the larger vector, we want it to be shrunk down so it has a length or a magnitude of 1. So let's sketch it. This one is in quadrant 4 this time. We're going over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and down 1. So here is my vector with in standard position starting at the origin and finishing at 6, negative 1. I need to figure out the magnitude. So let's first find its length by using the Pythagorean theorem. So 6 squared is 36 plus 1 squared is 1, so 37 is c squared. So that means c is the square root of 37, and that one won't simplify. So let's take our vector. 6, negative 1, and we're going to multiply by 1 over the magnitude. So 1 over the square root of 37. Now, when we distribute that, this is, becomes a scalar multiplication, right? So we're going to distribute it in. So our answer is 6 over the square root of 37 and negative 1 over the square root of 37. And there is our unit vector. Now, how can we verify? Well, let's rationalize it. So we never want to, uh, in, uh, we never want, we don't want to leave a radical on the denominator. So we just rationalize that. And that's because it's an irrational number. You want to divide by irrational numbers. So you get the vector six. 37 over 37 and negative root 37 over 37, multiplying the top and bottom by radical 37. And there's our final answer. So there is our unit vector. So basically, what have we drawn? What have we calculated? We've made this, and I'm drawing in red up here, okay? We've taken this longer vector that has, a high, that has a magnitude of root 37, which is a little bit bigger than 6. And we've shrunk it down so it has a length of 1. So it would actually fall on a unit circle, this vector would. Okay? So how do we verify that it indeed has a, magnet, or has a magnitude of 1? So I'm just going to go ahead and plug get into the Pythagorean theorem. This time I'm going to do it with a rationalized version of it. Okay, so I'm going to take 6 root 37, quantity squared over 37, plus negative root 37 over 37. And let's square that and see, do we get, it's a big question, do we get 1? Well, let's see, that's going to be... When we square root uh, 6 root 37, we're going to get 36 times 37 all over 37 squared. 
plus the negative 1 squared will be positive 1. And then we'll have root 37 squared is 37 over 37 squared. Now add your numerators. 36 37 plus 137 is 37 37ths all over 37 squared. Well, that's 37 squared. Boom, boom, boom. The last one, all this equals 1. So there we go. We just proved, yes, indeed, that does simplify to 1. So that's how the unit vectors work. Now, the unit vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1 are what we call standard unit vectors. And there we denote them with an I and a J. I being the horizontal direction and J being the vertical direction. So these are just unit vectors and they fall on the unit circle. So you can write any vector as well as this sum of the two standard unit vectors. And this is called a linear combination using i's and j's. It's just another form of writing vectors. So let's write some vectors in these different forms. So here's linear combinations. And this one is telling me that this is at the, the component form of this is very easy. It's just going to be 6, negative 2. And that would be the same vector. This is in, as a linear combination, and this is in component form, so just so you understand the difference between the two forms. Okay, so let's start with two vectors. Let u be a vector with an initial point at 2, negative 5, and a terminal point at negative 1, positive 3. Write u as a linear combination of i's and j's. So I'm going to go back, let's grab this, and there is the vector. Okay, so graphically, what's going on? We have 1, 2, 3 in the left direction, so that's a negative 3, right? And in the y direction, we're going up 5 and 3 more, so 8. So there is the component form, okay? So we've graphed, whoops, let me put it up here with a component form. So we've graphed it, and then we've written the component form. Now let's write it as a linear combination. So the linear combination would simply be negative 3 in the x in the horizontal or x direction and a positive 8j in the vertical direction. And that's how we write it as the sum of two vectors or the linear combination. Okay? It's just written as a sum. Now, if 8 were negative, we would just have negative 3i minus 8j. You don't, you don't have to write plus a negative. You can just write that as minus. That's fine. And it's very simply that. Now, if we want to do this algebraically, remember, it is terminal minus initial. So if I wanted to calculate this vector algebraically, I would take the terminal point, so negative 1 is the x-coordinate, minus 2. That's going to give me negative 3. And then 3 minus a negative 5, that's going to be give me 8 in the vertical direction. So I can see that's, yes, negative 3i plus positive 8j. So again, your algebraic approach is an option also. We were just looking at the, the graph. Okay. Let's try another one. Okay, we have negative 2, positive 6. That's your initial point. Negative 8, negative 3, terminal point. Make sure you know which one's terminal and which one's initial. So from the initial, I draw it to the terminal. Now, algebraically, it's really easy. How far am I going over? I'm going over from negative 2 to negative 8. That is negative 6. Then I'm going from positive 6 and down to, um, ooh, that should be a positive 3. I haven't done that. Right here, positive 3. Okay, so I'm going from 
let's stretch this out to the 8. Oh, I totally screwed that up. Let's see if we can't make this work. There we go. Okay, then we're going down 3. So down 3. So how do I write that as a linear combination? Negative 6i minus 3j. How do I write that in component form? Negative 6 comma negative 3. Same factor, two different forms, linear combination, component form. Okay, and there we go. That's the end of this day's lesson. This is the sixth lesson in a series, so I hope this video was helpful.